Every now and then I'm going to make a video about an unreleased game. I'm going to start with Corn Buster because it sort of caught me by surprise. I saw it in a list of Super Nintendo ROMs and I gave it a try. It seemed really strange and then it, it appeared to be broken. Some of the features weren't working and the game would actually crash. I've never... I can't recall a game crashing on the Super Nintendo if it wasn't a hardware error. And I'd never heard of it. I'd, we used to we used to collect our Super Nintendo magazines when I was a kid. We we had heaps of them. I I knew about pretty much every game. So I thought I'd look into it, do a bit of research on it. This is the kind of game that people will play just so they can criticize it, just so they can make fun of it. You can find a couple of other Let's Plays on YouTube. They will criticize it pretty strongly and laugh at it. It's a very weird game. The premise doesn't really make any sense. You're this dragon named Globy. And your goal is to find and defeat the person who's stolen all the cornflakes in the world. There is no <laughs> busting of corn. There is no corn to speak of that I've seen. And the main character doesn't really have anything to do with what happens in the main part of the game. You just use a dragon to walk around the map and select different levels. Fundamentally, this is an Arkanoid or Breakout style game combined with a scrolling vertical shooter. Let's just quickly look at the lineage of these games. So first of all, Pong came out in 1972. It's where you have uh, two little bats on either side and they bounce a, a ball between each other. Breakout was a game released in 1976. And it was basically Pong turned on its side and instead of hitting the ball up to another bat, you hit the ball up and break blocks above you. This is what you're looking at is the Atari version, Atari 2600. Arkanoid came out in 1986, which is a bit of an updated version of it, a bit, bit more complex gameplay. And that led to a game in 1987 called Breaker. I've seen it called Breaker Breaker as well. This one, pretty much no one's heard about this, and it's sort of an evolution of Arkanoid. This is the one that most directly influenced Corn Buster. The core mechanics of the game are identical, but Corn Buster added a few more features. The first major thing that people notice about this game is the fact that you can hold onto the ball and just wait until you scroll to the end of the level. Then you'll go past the end of the level and the game will crash without fail. Or maybe I should say with fail. And it uh, usually makes people lose their shit and just... and they'll decide that this game is a piece of crap. And that's fair enough really because why would anyone release a game like that? It seems crazy. Well it would be and the reason it's in there is because the game's only 70 to 80 percent completed. Being able to hold onto your ball and just hold onto your balls and just run at the end of the level, um, it's a debug feature. It's so you can, so the developers could test the game. You can you can just run around the whole each level and try out everything. It's actually supposed to release the ball within a couple of seconds. People just go crazy when they see unfinished games. They always seem to assume that bugs and glitches and debug features are part of the finished game somehow. They can't uh, think forward and see how it might look when, it, when it's completed or just... You just have to think, okay, this is, this is a really shit, nonsensical thing. The game isn't finished yet, so I can't pass judgement. If you look at my channel, you'll see I've got a lot of DayZ videos, and it's a problem in the community that uh, a lot of people don't understand what an, what an alpha version means, what beta means. So w there are some real um, teething problems with Steam's early access program. So, Corn Buster is almost like going back in time and playing an early access version of this, of this game. And so taking these game breaking issues into consideration, it's not too bad. One of the main differences between this and Breakup is the fact that you can have two players. So, one player controls the top paddle and probably a little brother or sister controls the, the lower paddle. I'm demonstrating this now with uh, I'm using a joystick and the keyboard at the same time to control both paddles. The main skill in the game, of course, is hitting the, that ball at just the right angle and trying to predict where it's going to bounce off. There are also little power-ups and uh, things that will harm you. Restrict your vision, reverse the controls, even like little useless ones that make it snow. There are mini-games you can find like this Pac-Man clone. Pretty cute that they've made a border that looks like an, an old... Uh, an old monitor. I don't know how many of these little things there are, this is the, the only one I've found inside levels, but I'm, I'm sure there are more because there are lots of power-ups that I haven't tried yet. The money you collect as dollar symbols inside levels, you can also take that to buy extra lives and you can gamble with it. Pay for that operation to make your paddle wider. 
And there are boss fights, fucking boss fights. This is the only one I've come up to since I've bothered playing. This massive spider. It took me a couple of tries to get him. The first time I lost my lost the ball and just scrolled off the end of the level again. So a lot of work's been done in the game. You can see there are a lot of art assets, the music's pretty good. It's pretty playable for being 70 to 80 percent done. So why wasn't it finished and why did it stay unreleased? The media didn't even hear about it. There weren't even any previews or screenshots sent to magazines. Nothing happened. It just appeared on the internet one day. It turns out that the project was cancelled because the PlayStation was released, which meant that they'd now be competing with the next generation of games. And then they were offered to, do, to work on uh, several other projects for the Game Boy Color. So it was a business decision. It was less of a risk to try to port it over to a different platform than to just start developing new games. And then a few years later, uh, Engine Software just quietly uh, released this, this ROM on their website. I just realized I haven't mentioned the, develop the name of the developer this whole time, Engine Software. By the way, Globy is still uh, on their logo on their website, and they have developed other games that feature Globy as a character, a dragon. Cornbuster isn't a very well-known game, and those who do know about it tend to think it's just terrible, but they generally don't understand the state of development that it was in. I wouldn't say it's a great game, but it's not too bad. It might have had some moderate success. And apart from Breaker, there hasn't really been a game released that, that plays exactly like this. I hope you found that interesting. I'll make another video about an unreleased game sometime when I feel like it. Thanks for watching.